Hello students. Today we would be studying about the steps in the research process. The steps are numerous. They are 10 in number. They consist of closely related activities and these activities need to be done in the prescribed sequence. So the first step in a research process is identification and selection of a research problem. A research problem can be got from several sources. It can be the theory of one's own interest. It can be some daily issue or some daily problem. It can be technological changes that are happening around the world. It can be recent trends or current affairs. It can be unexplored areas, areas which have not been touched upon or studied earlier. It can be an idea which is got from discussions of experts or a research guide. Whatever the idea or the source of the idea got for undertaking a research study, the topic or the research problem should be suitable for research, which means that it should have scope for research. The researcher should have interest in the topic, that is, the researcher should be having better comprehension of the topic. If he has interest in it, he will be able to comprehend it, comprehend the concepts better and explain and dwell more into the matter. It should also be a topic which is chosen and has relevance to a current issue study. The second step is the formulation of a research problem. It means that the researcher is trying to make the research problem now more specific, trying to find out all the details that can be studied within that research. For example, if the researcher had initially thought of the research problem to be in the area of NPA in the banking sector, that is non-performing assets in the banking sector, he goes a step further to clarify and to make the details clear of what is he going to study. So he goes a step further and explains his research problem as a study of the problem of NPAs in the public sector banks from the period 2015 to 2020. And basically there can be two types of research problems. One in which he studies a relationship between the variables or else it can be of a descriptive nature where the researcher studies the nature of the things that are already existing. The third step is the review of literature. Literature is defined as the content, the matter, the substance re relevant to that topic which is already published. And the researcher needs to do a lot of reading of the matter, the substance which is already published in the area that he or she wishes to do a research. Reviewing that literature means analyzing it and interpreting uh, it in the fashion that is relevant again for the research problem selected. Review of literature also helps to find the research gaps. That is, if the researcher finds that the study that he or she has undertaken has already been done in the past, it may not be relevant to do it again. And hence, depending on what the earlier researchers have missed doing or were not able to do, this researcher now goes ahead and gets more of research done into that particular area where it has been missing in the past. So review of literature helps the researcher find out the research gaps and hence the researcher can only add more to the pool of knowledge by contributing something more and something new found knowledge to the current research study that the researcher has undertaken.
The next step is the formulation of hypothesis. A hypothesis is basically an assumption statement, a statement of which the researcher assumes to have variables and there is a relation between the variables. Or else if the researcher is doing a descriptive type of analysis, in this the researcher tries to establish a certain uh, level of evidence as to the existence of that phenomenon in the current world. So a hypothesis is a very important statement and the entire research revolves around this hypothesis statement because the researcher is finally testing this hypothesis in order to reach a conclusion to the research study that is undertaken. There are basically two types of hypothesis that every study would have. The researcher creates a alternative hypothesis or which is also called as the experiment hypothesis or the research hypothesis and the opposite of it would be the null hypothesis. This hypothesis becomes the base of your study. There could be a minimum of one hypothesis to every research study and there could be a maximum of seven or eight hypotheses to any research study. The research design is the next step which needs to be created in the research process. It is the blueprint of how the research is going to be implemented. The design would mean the defining process of the data collection. How is the data going to be collected? Is it going to be a primary data study? Is it going to be a secondary data study? Is it going to be a quantitative analysis or will it be a qualitative analysis? What is going to be uh, the method in which the hypothesis is being tested? There are several tests to test the hypothesis. As an example, the chi-square test, the t-test, the f-test. Which of these tests will be used to test the hypothesis will exactly be defined in this research design step. The next step is defining the sample, the number of the respondents that one would want to have in the research study if it is a primary study, defining the actual uh, demography or profile of the people who would be the sample as in male or female, the age group, the education level, the income level depending on the relevance to the study. There is a formula for calculating the sampling. Generally, it is 10% of the universal sample or universal individuals that are present relevant to the study. There are two kinds of techniques, probability and non-probability sampling techniques. It has to be defined before the data collection process begins as to what is going to be the sample and what is going to be the sampling techniques. In the research process step, this basically the research process is indicating the various steps which is creating the blueprint towards the entire research process. The next step in the research process is data collection. When the researcher actually goes down on the field to speak to the respondents, that is the sample size, get information relevant to the study and create an entire database of the data that has been collected. The next step is the data analysis. However, between these two steps of data collection and data analysis is a step called data processing where the researcher has to keep the entire data ready for analysis. The three steps that comes in data processing are editing, coding and tabulation. In the data analysis, the data is tabulated and then analyzed with some statistical tool in order to get inferences from the same. Softwares may be used like AMOS, SPSS, MS Excel. Finally, after the data is analyzed, you would interpret the data. The researcher interprets the data to get findings. 
the test would prove the hypothesis whether it is the null hypothesis which is valid or the alternative hypothesis is valid. The verbal description of this data collected is what we call as the interpretation of the data and from the interpretation will the researcher come and get the findings of the study and from the findings of the study would be able to derive the conclusion of the research study and the final step in the research process is preparation of the research report. The entire document which would have all these steps included, all the information included right from the theoretical background of the research problem to the research design, to the sample design, to the data that has been collected, analyzed, interpreted and at the end after the conclusion would also be mentioned the scope of the study that is if the study applies to who or to which factors and the limitations of the study where the researcher has failed to do certain factors in the relevant uh, research topic. Also importantly in a research report it is essential to go through a plagiarism test because plagiarism basically means taking the work of other researchers and not giving them credit and hence it is important to avoid plagiarism during your research report writing. Hence the research process is right from the identification of a research problem to co collecting data, analyzing the data and writing the research report which is then ready to be read by other people who would want to study in that relevant academic area.